We'll start with Tom and walk backwards. Tom, I think you were jokingly said to me earlier, well, I'm a really you know, long-time startup or an old startup. So you've been at it for a while. I mean, you're, you're doing P2P for free. I mean, what a great idea, right? They must be banging down your door to try to give you venture capital money to grow this great business. So what's it like being an entrepreneur in payments? Well, that's a loaded question there, Dixon. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Um, perhaps what I'll do is uh, say that uh, they're not banging down our door. Uh, there's, uh, with the exception of our esteemed panels here, there's very few, uh, I would say, venture capital investors who specialize in mobile payments per se. And there's a lot of noise in this space, and uh, it tends to get lost. Okay, thank you. So one of the things that Bitcoin has done for us lately as has really kind of pointed out that there's an opportunity to lower uh, clearing and settlement costs between individuals by using a virtual currency to affect real-time transfer uh, at almost zero cost, therefore uh, bypassing the traditional clearing and settlement systems. So what P2P Cash has done is we've created a patent-pending uh, virtual currency we call BitMinutes that allows us to send value as either time or money. And, you know, we're, again, there's no such thing as original idea, uh, that the idea has come from uh, the currencies being used today uh, in many countries that allow you to, in essence, uh, act as a virtual currency using minutes. So if I run out of minutes and I say to Leon, hey man, I'm, I need minutes, I don't have time, here's $10, give me $10 a minute. It, it works in many, many countries. And if you can take the same concept and apply it to cash, that's what we're trying to do here with BitMinutes. We're trying to create a ubiquitous form of sending value at very, very low cost. In fact, we charge zero to the sender uh, to be able to make it either minutes or money being sent in real time directly to any phone on the planet. That's our goal. So we're gonna, really just a little bit of a use case. So this is pretty much what, what I was saying here earlier is that you already have a virtual currency today being used. It's called minutes. People do it all the time. Uh, we don't see it in this country as much because we live more of a postpaid model, whereas prepaid, um, as Jonathan said earlier, when your phone stops, you're, you, you can't talk. You have to go buy more minutes. And there's no such thing as a two-year contract, et cetera, et cetera. So it's minutes actually used as a currency. And in the other case, remittance is just really straightforward. You're sending money back to Bob in Nairobi. So you've got two worlds here where you've, you're, you've got transfer of value, money and minutes. The two just haven't combined at this point. So when you combine the, the value of these two markets, it's pretty darn big. So it's roughly a half trillion for prepaid minutes. Prepaid minutes, I think, is 600 million, there's, I think there's some MNOs here that could, you know, I think it's a, it's a big number, it's 600 billion at least, and money transfer is, is somewhere in that 400, 440 billion, trending towards half a trillion. Put them together, you got a trillion dollar market. So, uh, someone else said too, too many mouths to feed uh, today, and uh, we believe this is one of the problems that Western Union has, they've got a great infrastructure, it's been amortized down to zero, so you know, from an accounting perspective, they have a very, very low cost clearing and settlement system, but it's proprietary, it's closed loop, um, and again, there's just a lot of mouths to feed, and they have approximately half a million locations worldwide. So a fellow walks into a retail store who has a bank, that bank has to clear to Western Union's bank, run over the, uh, the closed network, and you reverse the process on the receiving side. And it's roughly a third, a third, a third, uh, retailer accepting, retailer dispersing gets a third, and West Union gets a third of the fee, plus the FX typically. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, hey look, buy bit minutes, and we don't care if you want to send it as cash, we don't care if you want to send it as money, because of the, the, what they call the remote, anyone here heard of remote top-up? Okay, so we, the concept there is that you buy prepaid minutes and you send it to your friend in Nigeria and he basically uses it to top up his phone. So this concept of using a virtual currency, if you ride the existing rails, 
and create an interface or an ability to convert that virtual currency into either cash or minutes depending upon what rail you're riding or how you're planning on dispersing the cash and or the minutes. That's our goal here. So we've already integrated the SWIFT. Uh, we were a top SWIFT, uh, top 10, 100 startup for the last two years. So SWIFT likes us. We have the uh, CEO, uh, the ex-CEO of SWIFT on our advisory board. Um, we're integrating to a company that MasterCard just recently purchased controlling interest in, a company called HomeSend, which has aggregated close to a billion dollar, or me, a billion potential mobile wallets. Now these are China Mobiles, the Vodafones of the world, so they've got a billion phone numbers that they hope to create mobile wallets. So they've aggregated a lot of these mobile wallets in 31 countries. And then of course MasterCard has 26 million retail locations. So we're, we're, we're trying to figure out a way to create a ubiquitous uh, clearing and settlement mechanism in real time between any two individuals, any two phones basically, because your phone pretty much is your ID. Your, your Andy was talking about you know, what constitutes an ID. Uh, we believe the phone is the ID. And of course, following the proper KYC and, and AML uh, issues. So of course, when you say we'll send money for free, we're gonna get some traction. You know, we're just now launching into Kenya. And Kenya is a perfect market for this because everybody has, or a good number of people have, mobile wallets of some sort. So we're launching with one of the major banks in Kenya, uh, literally in the, within the next week for the pilot phase, and the cost is zero. And we can put direct deposit into the mobile wallet. Um, we do it, hopefully, uh, our MasterCard discussions go as we anticipate. We'll have 26 million retailers, and of course, prepaid time as well and instantaneous clearing time. This is another advantage of a virtual currency. The minute I say I'm gonna send you Bitcoin or Bit Minutes, bang, it's done. You've got the stored value in your wallet of that particular virtual currency. Uh, we've tried to improve over Bitcoin, and um, again, we've got some patent uh, protection in this space. Um, we tried to add value by wrapping the stored value or the virtual currency itself you know, with AML and KYC policies. We're trying to do this the right way. We're licensed MSB in Georgia, where we're headquartered. Uh, we also believe that there's some inherent value if you use prepaid time as your currency, the fact that you can always use it. You know, if Bitcoin says that Mt. Gox blew up and all the other exchanges blew up where they found up, you know, a flawed Bitcoin they couldn't fix, you know, Bitcoin could go to zero very quickly. And then also the volatility is an issue, and uh, we decided to just say a bit minutes worth one dollar worth of prepaid time. So that's it, um, you know, sort of a use case as to how a virtual currency can be used to, you know, hopefully integrate some of these payment and settlement processes uh, worldwide. Uh, we've designed the least common denominator, which is peer-to-peer, -peer, which is phone-to-phone. -phone. Uh, we're trying to, again, standardize this as much as possible, and uh, we're open to any ideas of partnerships or uh, any type of uh, uh, joint ventures. We're very flexible there. So if, should I take a question or any questions? Clear as mud? Yes, sir. Yeah, Tom, real quick. You had said that uh, the service is free of charge for the center. The business models on the receiver end. The receiving end, they get legally. You have to quote the number of Kenyan shillings or Mexican pesos you're going to deliver to mom in, in Mexico or mom in Nairobi. So you say that on the website. We, we're basically a competitor to Zoom or Asimo or some of the other uh, startups in the uh, online uh, remittance space. But there's no additional fee to mom from our perspective. We're planning on putting it directly into her mobile wallet. She doesn't have one. We're partnering in these other countries with the mobile wallet providers to give instant issue her one. Um, but the answer is no, there is no fee to the sender who typically pays the freight in remittance, uh, the remittance industry. Anyone else? Okay. Oh, we well, got one up there in the peanut gallery. Is that why you're trying to get the MasterCard network? 
Well, we've, we've got three ways of getting the, the value. Um, we're integrated to SWIFT, we're a SWIFT partner, so of the three billion bank accounts, we can put money directly into that account. We're, there, there's a new ISO standard, ISO 20022, that you can actually route it right into, directly into a bank account. Um, with the HomeSend product, which they've aggregated there in the bottom, uh, a billion phone numbers, that they're trying, all those vendors are trying to get, um, all those vendors are trying to get, uh, upsell those folks to uh, mobile wallets so we can directly deposit there. And the MasterCard point of sale network is, is the next step. That's what we're trying to uh, do next. But thank you folks.